In this video, I want to talk about the process that I use for finishing and polishing pieces. We'll go over some tools that I use that make the process a little bit easier, along with my recommendations and things to avoid along the way. After adding my last wires, the first step for me for finishing the piece is to make sure I go back and remove any and all tool marks on the piece. You can minimize the amount of work in this step by using nylon tipped pliers while you're working. In the case of this piece, you can see where some of my endings look a bit chewed up by my pliers. I want to make sure that I clean these up to a nice bright polish before shipping this piece to its new owner. The tools that I'll use for this process are these silicone polishing wheels mounted on a small mandrel. I can fit this into any rotary tool. I like to use a flex shaft, but you could also mount them in a Dremel or a power drill. I use an assortment of these wheels. Each color marks a different grit and finish that it will put onto the piece. For this purpose, I'm just going to use the pink ones. Now, as this full kit can be a little bit expensive, you only really need to purchase a pink along with some sort of polishing mandrel to mount the wheel onto. I'm going to be using one of the knife edge wheels. This one's slightly more ground down as I've used it over a little bit over time. To reshape these wheels, you can run them along a file or even some sandpaper to reshape the finish that you'll be putting onto the piece. I went ahead and mounted the wheel into my flex shaft and I'm ready to start cleaning up some of those nicks in the wire on this piece. Depending on the coarseness of wheel that you're using, these wheels can remove an incredible amount of material very quickly, so it's best to start slowly making sure that you're watching carefully to see how much metal you're removing with the wheel. It's really important to make sure that you're always moving either the piece or the wheel as you're working on the piece. Otherwise, it'll begin to create a divot in the metal, which is not quite what we're going for. You can begin to see where my silicone wheel is smoothing out some of the silver where I once had the teeth marks from my tools. I'm going to keep working on this until it's smooth and ready for the next step in polishing. Once I've smoothed out all of the tool marks from the piece, I can move on to my next step. The next tool that I like to use are these 3M bristle discs. These come in a whole array of colors with different grits for each one. This green one is a one micron grit, which is the highest that they come in. Since I don't want to remove much material and instead polish the material that is there, this is my first step in creating a nice smooth finish to the piece. When mounting these 3M discs onto one of your mandrels, just make sure that they twist with the motion that it will be in the handpiece or your drill. From here, I'm going to run across the piece with my 3M disc just lightly, not putting too much pressure and keeping it away from the stone. Even at one micron, it's enough 
of an abrasive that it could damage softer stones. Once I've prepared the whole surface of the piece with that 3M bristle disc, I'm ready to apply the polish to the piece. For this process, I'm going to use a mounted flannel buff and a polishing compound. What I have here is the orange Luxie compound. I like the Luxie products because they're not silicone based. So they easily dissolve in hot water to remove any of the extra polish from the piece when you're finished. Additionally, they're a little bit less abrasive on your environment. Breathing in silicone is incredibly unhealthy. The Luxie compounds are a little bit less abrasive on your lungs. You should always be sure to use proper eye protection and respiratory protection whenever you're using any of these rotary tools. Even if you can't see them, there are tons of little particles that will be flying in the air around you, and you want to keep that out of your eyes and lungs. To mount the polish onto your buff, gently run the buff through the polish for a moment to gather some on the wheel. This one is a little bit old and well used, so if yours is not as black as this one, don't worry about it. It only takes just a second to apply enough polish to finish the piece. From here, we're gonna go ahead and polish over the piece. Now this polish is fine enough that it could be used on stones without potential damage to the pieces. Once you've polished the full piece, we're ready to clean off all of the extra polish. The ideal tool for this is a jeweler's ultrasonic. If you don't have one, hot water and a new unused toothbrush works just as well. Keep in mind that some stones are sensitive to temperature change and should be gradually increased in temperature instead of directly submerged into hot water as you're cleaning. Once the piece is clean and all of the extra polish is removed, I move on to my final step in the polishing process. A polishing cloth is the perfect tool to remove all of the extra fingerprints that you've put all over the piece in your finishing stages of cleaning. For the best results here, you could wear gloves while cleaning the piece. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to do it by hand without the gloves. Gently rubbing polish into the silver. And here we have the finished piece, polished and ready for either pictures or sale. One of the things that I would avoid using during your finishing process is an old or used toothbrush to clean off the polish. Used toothbrushes will have traces of toothpaste on them. One of the main ingredients for toothpaste is baking soda. Baking soda is a gritty abrasive it can actually cause micro scratches on the polish that you just put onto your piece, undoing all of your hard work. I would always avoid any chemical dip that's marketed as a jewelry cleaner. 
Think of those chemical dips like this. If your car was dirty, you would take it to a car wash, or you could wash it with soap, water, and sponges carefully. You wouldn't dunk your whole car in acid and hope that all the dirt would just dissolve away. It's the same with jewelry. Those dips are incredibly abrasive, can actually cause micro pits and scratches to the surface of your pieces over time, damaging the jewelry instead of cleaning it. This is the first video where I've had tool recommendations for you, and I'm curious to hear what you think. Leave me a comment below and let me know if those recommendations are helpful and if you'd like more similar in the future. And as always, if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe for more content similar in the future. To see more of my work, check out my Instagram or my website in the description below. And if you're interested in helping support the channel, check out my Patreon page in those links below as well. And of course, a huge thank you goes out to all the patrons who already support what I do here on this channel.